cruising around furniture is seen earliest at which age yes we must be knowing that when the child you know moves with the help of taking the support of the furniture or somebody around that is known as cruising around furniture which is shown in the diagram the correct answer over here is 10 months of age so that is the correct answer right okay then coming to the next developmental milestone age of achieving this milestone is so what is this uh, child doing this child is turning is pivoting pivoting means turning around keeping the gluteal region as a base and he's is twisting his upper body on his gluteal region which is known as pivoting and pivoting remember also occurs at 10 months of age so 10 months of age is actually very very significant in the first year of life you have many milestones the child is going to uh, you know gain at 10 months of age one is cruising one is pivoting which we have just seen then uh, the child you know is what is the child doing it is he is drinking by the cup and in the next figure you can see the child is handling a spoon how do we remember when does this come so drinking by a cup comes at 15 months of age remember this and handling a spoon how do you remember i remember it like this so two we know spoon has two o's two golas and 18 months also has two golas right so 18 months right so 18 months has two golas and spoon also has two golas so remember handling of spoon comes by 18 months of age then let us come to the next milestone important milestones only we are discussing guys so that you can remember them you can concisely put it in your memory right independent walking is seen earliest at what age so that independent walking is 15 months this child is of 15 months walking independently by 12 months 12 months you know is nothing but one year the child walks with one hand held always remember this i always tell my students a you know story on his first birthday on her or his first birthday the mother would hold one hand of the child and take the child to the table where the cake has been set for him so that he or she can cut the cake and enjoy his moment so remember one hand held the child has to hold the hand of the mother and walk to the table so at one year of age walks with one hand held independent walking comes at 15 months of age right okay then uh, we should know some language milestones very commonly asked so monosyllables at what time do they come yes they come around six months of age bisyllables come at around nine months of age one to two words with, with meaning would come around one year of age eight to ten words would come around 18 months of age how do you remember 18 months see this is eight over here and there is eight over here so eight to ten words would come around 18 months of age now two to three word sentences over here we have to make some distinction so two to three word sentences and the usage of pronouns comes around two years of age remember two to three words sentences not two to three words only a sentence made up of two or two three words comes around two years of age while at two years of age the vocabulary is increases greatly to 100 words they can simply ask you vocabulary of 100 words is seen at what age remember two years two years two years imagine in the second year of life the child gains so much at one year he is just having the vocabulary of one to two words with meaning while at the age of two years the child is having a vocabulary of 100 words and he can make a sentence of two to three words at two years of age now asks questions knows full name and even gender so this comes at what age yes you are correct it comes at three years of age tell stories tell stories at four years of age later on also we will write what all he can do at four years so there you will say he tells stories he tells poems you know uh, that comes at four years of age and ask the meaning of words at five years of age now what has come in your previous year examination we need to revise that also so handedness remember is established usually by three years of age completely that means the child is going to be right handed or left handed that is completely clear by three years of age in certain books it is written it may come as early as two years of age but usually gets established by three years of age so we will consider three years as the time when the handedness will get established right 
okay then a mother let us do one question a mother suspects a developmental delay in a three year old child so she brings her to a pediatrician the pediatrician assures her that the child is not lagging in any milestone which milestone in the following options was present in this child with which assured the pediatrician okay so the child is going to the toilet alone saying songs or poems telling stories sharing toys knowing full name and gender okay one uh, d option is missing so let me write a d option for you the child can child is not able to draw a triangle so which milestone which was was the you know pediatrician uh, was present in this child which assured the pediatrician that this child is actually of three years of age and not a point of concern at all so what is this yes you are correct the correct answer is going to be the child shares toys knows full name and gender see in certain books you may find sharing toys coming at four years of age but look at other things also over here the child is knowing his full name knowing his gender that usually comes at three years of age so that is how the pediatrician is going to assure the mother that nothing is wrong with the child even if he cannot draw a triangle the triangle drawing comes at what years yes it comes at five years of age so therefore we are not concerned if the three-year-old child cannot draw a triangle because they anyways that he will achieve at five years of age saying songs or poems telling stories this all comes at four years of age going to the toilet alone again comes at four years of age so what is age appropriate in this child is the option c and that is going to be the correct answer over here right now coming to the uh, fine motor dressing which we should know that the child is able to pull off socks or mittens by one year unzips by 18 months always remember the child would first learn to un un means undress unzip and then zip himself zip himself up or dress himself up so undressing comes by two years and then putting on shorts, shoes and socks comes at two years so he was able to take off his socks or mittens at one years but putting on comes at two years now he's able to undress himself at two years while he will be able to dress himself by three years of age and finally the tying of shoelaces very very important from your examination point of view lots of question this is one uh, you know clue that will be there in the question that will help you that decide whether the child is of five years of age or not tying shoelaces and the other thing which comes for five years is can draw a triangle always remember that bacha if you are able to you know uh, spot these two milestones in the question then straight away go for the age of age of five years right now uh Another thing, child copy circle by what age? Yes, you are correct. Three years of age, cross. Cross also, please don't uh, take cross as multiplication size. Cross means a plus sign over here that comes at four years of age and a triangle would come at five years of age. You know, the child would be able to copy a triangle at five years of age, a cross at four years of age, that means a plus sign and finally, you know, a circle by three years of age. So at four years child, what all the child can do? That should be very aware. We should be aware of, he can sing a song, he can tell poem, ask questions, goes to the toilet alone, you know, then button his clothes very importantly see buttoning does not come at three years if you we just saw that two years the child learns to undress himself important right at three years he learns to dress himself at four years the child you know learns to button himself up so button handling comes at four years not before that right then catches ball reliably at uh, again at four years and as i told you copies rectangle cross or plus sign at four years how do you remember four four is you know four corners so four corners of rectangle he is able to draw at four years for that matter you can al also say square but square specifically they have written 4.5 years for a square but does not matter they are not going to ask you so much in detail but you should know the four sides 
sided figures like a rectangle is drawn at four years of age right at five years what all get the child can do he can tie shoelaces he can help in household chores again very important skip very very important will help you solve many mcqs right which comes for five years copies a triangle or a multiplication sign so actually a multiplication sign comes at five years can follow three step commands can compare two weights and can distinguish between morning and evening so that also comes at uh, five years of age. So, this is a list. Why I have given you a list for three, four and five years, Bacha? Because this is usually the, you know, hotbed for the questions which arise for these years. So, you should be very well aware what all the child can do at three years, four years and five years. Three years we, cons you know, we discussed in form of a question and then four years and five years we have already discussed, right? Okay. Then let us uh, come to the next question. Which of the following milestone is not seen at one year stands without support can speak uh, mama papa plays peekaboo draws parallel lines so we know this the child can stand without support can speak mama papa because these are bi syllables would that would come you know at nine months of age itself can play peekaboo even that comes at around eight to nine months of age and draws parallel lines remember draws parallel lines there are two lines to be drawn and that comes at two years of age always remember the parallel lines of for that matter line is a you know geometrical figure with two ends so that is how you have to remember that will come at two years of age not at one year of age so our correct answer is going to be the d option so d option is correct over here then, uh, so this is how we are going to remember. So, at one year of age, the child can scribble, right? At two years of age, the child can draw two parallel lines that we have just discussed. At three years, circle, four years, plus sign. Let us, let us, you know, just let us cross it plus sign rather than across. So, four years plus sign, four and a half years comes the square. And then five years comes the triangle. And finally, at six years, the child can draw a six-sided figure or maybe a, you know, even a diamond can be drawn at six years. So, six years, you know, if they ask, then diamond drawing that comes at six years, right? Or a six-sided figure. Okay, now let us move forward. So, this is a child waving you bye-bye. What is the, uh, you know, appropriate age or probable age of this child? So, most probably the child is nine months of age because why waving bye-bye comes at nine months of age how do you remember you know the child is given mr or for that matter mmr and then he waves bye bye to you remember that so that phase you will remember this vaccine mr vaccine and mmr vaccine is given at nine months of age so in you know in the public domain i know mr is given while in the private practice in our country mmr is given where the another m stands for mumps and mr stands for measles and rubella vaccine so, he would take the MR or the MMR vaccine and then wave bye-bye to you. No child is going to do that. I know that he'll be in pain. But anyways, that is how you remember. Right. Now, this child, tell me the age of this child. So, let us count the cubes. You know, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So, 9. He's, this child has very nicely, ably, you know, constructed a tower of 9 cubes. And then you are being asked, what is the you know approximate age of this child so how do we remember the cubes so remember at 15 months the child can you know construct a tower of two cubes at 18 months three cubes and then very easy to remember only these two you have to remember eight two years and three years you just multiply by three and you get your answer so six cubes over here and nine cubes over here and we can see this child has you know constructed a tower of nine cubes so my answer is going to be the age of this child is yes you guessed it right the child is of three years of age so remember 15 months two cubes 18 months just add one more cube that means three cubes and two years and three years multiply by three so two into three is six cubes and three into three is nine cubes right so you should know these your cubes handling or tower constructing very well because again a hotbed of questions for you right
Then what is the approximate age of this child? Tell me this. Yes, you are correct. The answer is six months. The child, you know, watches his mirror image and smiles. So that comes at six months. Now this, let us assume, is a stranger. So with a stranger, the child is howling, is crying, is not happy. What do you call it? We call it stranger anxiety. And when does stranger anxiety come? It comes at around six to seven months of age. So that you should remember the approximate age or the probable age of this child is around six to seven months that is the earliest seen stranger anxiety and very importantly the grasp how does it develop so at five to six months the child would be having a palmer grasp so you can see he is using whole of his palm to catch the object of his interest like radial palmer grass would come at around 6 to 7 months of age and then at 9 months of age he would start with his pincer grass. Now that pincer grass which is seen at 9 months of age is not a very clear or a clean pincer grass, right? Uh, so that is why it is sometimes referred to as immature pincer grass or an inferior pincer grasp wherein the child is not using the tips of his index finger and his thumb but the side portion of his fingers and thumb. So this will be known as inferior pincer grasp or the immature pincer grasp that begins at around 8 to 9 months of age more appropriately you would say 9 months of age right and then a uh, fully developed pincer grass where he would neatly you know pick up a raisin or a very small you know dana of let us say a rye or a mustard very cleanly he would pick up using the tip of his index and thumb finger which is known as the uh, mature pincer grass so that comes at around 12 months of age so mature pincer grass is seen at 12 months of age so that you should be very very clear with very commonly asked in your exam right now tell me the next question, answer to this question, which of the following appears first in the child, creeping, crawling, mirror play or the pincer grasp. So see, creeping and crawling, so we are very much confused, creeping kise kehte hain, crawling kise kehte hain. Always remember the snakes, they crawl and the cats, they creep, right? And crawling, A comes before E, so Snakes crawl, that means crawling would come at 8 months and the creeping would come at 10 months. Creeping is nothing but the child, you know, walking or, you know, crawling on all his force with abdomen of the ground. Abdomen of the ground, that is what is known as creeping. It is not called crawling. Always remember the children, they get confused between creeping and crawling. So, this is cats, the way the cats move that is known as creeping while the snakes would crawl. So, that comes at 8 months and the uh, creeping would come at 10 months. Mirror play, we just saw the child is smiling at his mirror image that comes at 6 months. And pincer grass would come between 9 to 12 months. Since they have not mentioned whether they are asking about mature or immature, we would just say 9 to 12 months. Now, we have to decide which appears first. So, we can very clearly see what appears first in this child is the mirror play. This is going to be your correct answer for this question. Right. So, let us again see what is crawling and creeping. So, this is what I was saying. This is snake crawling, right? And this is cat creeping. So, that is what comes at 8 and 10 months respectively, right? Okay, then let us move forward. The red flag signs, very, very important, which we all need to know because that is how, you know, you can be judged, you can, you can be asked about the upper limit of a particular milestone, which you should be aware of. So, very, uh, you know, easy ones I would do first. So, you know, scribbling usually begins at one year of age. We just saw that figure of one, two, three, four, where at one year they had shown something like one and then there was a scribbling like this. So, scribbling begins at one year of age. So, if it does not appear by two years of age, it's a red flag sign. Pincer grasp usually begins by nine months of age. If it has not appeared by 12 months of age, it's a red flag sign, right? Sitting with support. Support usually comes at around 5 or 6 months of age. If it has not come by 9 months, it is a red flag sign. Standing with support usually comes at around 9 to 10 months of age. If it has not come by 12 months, it's a red flag sign. Walking with support comes at around, again, you know, 
10 to 11 months of age sometimes 11 to 12 we can say walking with support with come but if it does not come by 15 months it's a red flag sign because by 15 months the child should be walking independently but here the child is not being able to even walk with support so that's a red flag sign and walking without support you know usually comes appears at 15 months if it does not comes by 18 months it's a red flag sign so you should know these red flags very clearly Vocalization usually begins by two months of age, does not come by six months, it's a red flag, flag sign. Babbling usually comes at four to five or six months and then does not come by 12 months, it's a red flag sign. Single words usually come by one year of age if they have not appeared by 16 months, it is a red flag sign. A very important milestone which everybody needs to remember even in their deep sleep is the appearance of social smile usually comes by 8 to 12 weeks of age. Has not come by 6 months, it's a red flag sign very commonly asked in your exam. Waving bye-bye usually comes by 9 months but if the child is not waving bye-bye by 12 months, it's a red flag sign. So, this you should be knowing the important uh, milestones whose upper limit of normalcy has to be remembered and so that you can answer the questions right so let us move forward i think enough for the milestones let us move with the nutrition chapter an eight month old child was found to have features of vitamin a deficiency what is the dose of oral vitamin a which is required so we should know that you know different ages and we all already you know aware of the dosages so let us quickly recap for less than six months the dosage of oral vitamin a is 15,000 international units for six to 12 months it is one lakh international units right and for more than 12 months it is two lakh international units remember if the child is more than 12 months but less than 8 kg still we will give only one lakh international units because of his less weight so that caveat should also be remembered by us right and remember when we are treating the vitamin uh, a deficiency three doses have to be given when at day one at day two and at day 28 right now this was a eight month old child so if we go by our table for a eight month old what is the correct dosage yes the correct dosage is going to be the c option that is the one lakh international units have to be given now one more thing which everybody has to remember is that if there is you know important is clouding of cornea i've noticed then straight away one has to go for parental vitamin a and the dose is 50000 to 1 lakh units so that has that is an emergency to be treated if the clouding of cornea is noted that means opacity has already developed on the cornea then we have to go for you know and if this is a Obviously, if this is an, uh, you know, uh, feature of vitamin A deficiency, we can see clouding of cornea with some congenital problems also or some, you know, storage disorders like mucopolysaccharidosis and that we do not need to give that much. But only when we are suspecting vitamin A deficiency associated clouding of cornea, then one has to go for emergent treatment in form of 50,000 to 1 lakh vitamin a given parentally right and one more important thing is that if you you know over give over dosage of vi hyper uh, of vitamin a hyper vitaminosis a results in pseudo tumor cerebri where the child will exhibit signs of erased icp without there being an organic lesion so that is pseudo tumor cerebri for you you should remember very this is very important side effect of vitamin a overdosage right okay now let us come back to our question next question pearly white lesions with foamy appearance can you see this lovely foamy appearance not very lovely for the child of course but very nicely given over here with foamy appearance seen on the sclera of the child which of the following other symptoms are related to the deficiency of the same nutrients causing the mentioned lesion? We know these are nothing but bitot spots. And bitot spots we know cause are, you know, they are caused by vitamin A deficiency. So, what other than bitot spots can vitamin A deficiency cause? Can it cause conjunctival xerosis? Of course, it can cause conjunctival xerosis. Can it cause uh, angulostomatitis? Angulostomatitis is more a feature of B2 deficiency. Again, glossitis is more a feature of B2 deficiency and a photosensitive rash we all know is a hallmark of pellagra or a niacin deficiency, right, which we see in the form of castles or casals necklace right around the neck or in the areas which 
are exposed to sunlight, right? So, here uh, since we are talking about vitamin A deficiency, so our correct answer is going to be conjunctival xerosis. So, this is the way you know the questions can be asked where the examiner is trying to test not only your knowledge about vitamin A but for other vitamins also so that you can very clearly you know strike off other options. Okay, now the WHO classification, we I am sure you must be totally you know. Uh, this should be totally kya kehte hain wo ratke ghotke pee jao very important from all your PSM point of view and the pediatrics point of view but a quick recap we know there are primary signs and the secondary signs the primary signs is X1A 1B and then we have X2 and then X3A 3B X1A starts with conjunctival xerosis 1B B stands for bite rot spots then 2 is for corneal xerosis and 3 and 3B would be dealing with corneal ulceration where the ulceration is involving less than one third of the cornea that would be x3a and 3b would be where it is involving more than one third of the cornea right and then we have the secondary signs where we have n f n s n stand xn stands for night blindness f stands for fundal changes and s stands for corneal scarring so that you should be totally aware of treatment we have already discussed above vitamin a right now let us move to the other vitamin deficiency which nutrient deficiency can cause collagen defect yes we know this umpteen number of times it has been asked this is none other than your favorite vitamin which we find in you know oranges and that is your vitamin c also known as ascorbic acid we know that vitamin c is absolutely essential for the cross-linking of the fiber strands of collagen you know by for uh, the addition of lysine and proline and making the collagen strong because you know the collagen is a part and parcel of the connective tissue and vitamin C is absolutely essential for all that purpose. If vitamin C is not there, there is you know instability or there is defective connective tissue and that is why what we get to see is you know a subperiosteal hemorrhages would be there, perifollicular hemorrhages would be there, gum bleeding is there. So all these features would come with vitamin C deficiency which we know by the name of scurvy right so collagen defect occurs because of vitamin c deficiency coming to the next question again closely related to what we were just discussing a 10 month old child predominantly on milk based diet in which he is given very importantly boiled cow's milk daily presence to you with irritability, anemia, bleeding gums, pity ke all over the body and inability to move his lower limbs what is the most likely diagnosis so, what are we dealing with? Is it scurvy, rickets, Keshan disease or is it Menke's disease? What are we dealing with? So, please remember this is nothing but scurvy. What you, you know, what tells us this is scurvy? Why not we go for rickets? See, he is being given a milk-based diet importantly and that also boiled cow's milk. You should know anyways the cow's milk vitamin C content is almost negligible. Around 0.2 to 2 gram per 100 ml. Imagine. And that also when we boil it, this milk vitamin C content becomes a big fat zero because vitamin C is a heat sensitive vitamin. Anyways, boiled cow's milk has no vitamin C and the child is not being given other anything other than uh, boiled milk. So that, that also cow's milk. So that is why he is prone to develop vitamin C deficiency. And we know vitamin C deficiency gives rise to subperiosteal hemorrhages, perifollicular hemorrhages and gum bleeding gums. And of course, the irritability and anemia would be there. And why he is not able to move his limb is again because of the intense pain because of the subperiosteal hemorrhages. So, that is why that you should know that scurvy is one of the differential diagnoses of pseudoparalysis. Pseudoparalysis means the child is not moving his limbs because of the pain, not because of some CNS disorders, but because of the pain. So, if we have to, you know, go for the causes of pseudoparalysis, always remember certain, you know, Causes of pseudoparalysis, first is your scurvy, second is hypokalemia, very very important when the potassium, serum potassium levels are very low and the third important cause which everyone has to remember is congenital syphilis. In, in syphilis also we get to see periosteitis, periosteitis, we would see the x-ray pictures of periosteitis and then you would realize that that is also one of the cause where the newborn would be having pseudoparalysis, would not be moving his limbs right so this is curvy for you Keshan disease we are going to discuss don't worry and then Menkes disease also we are going to discuss in the coming slides okay then uh, these are the features of 
riboflavin deficiency and we all know riboflavin deficiency is nothing but vitamin b2 all asked in your previous year uh, question as a question which has come in your previous year so that is why i have put over here so this is nothing but intensely red tongue this is glossitis of course if this kind of tongue comes with other features of cervical unilateral cervical lymph nopathy and edema of the hands and feet then your diagnosis should become what yes kawasaki disease not this but here this we are dealing with a non vasculitic kind of thing so here the diagnosis will become glossitis and this is your angular chelitis you know so this is vitamin b2 deficiency very importantly sometimes in the question they have not given glossitis and glostomatitis these two things have not been given what has been given is the child is having photophobia seborrheic dermatitis typically around nasolabial folds right and corneal vascularization and the cataract then what is your diagnosis see when the glossitis and chelitis is not given and these features are given then also you should be able to catch it this is riboflavin deficiency very important right now non specific symptoms of vitamin b2 deficiency includes anorexia weight loss weakness dizziness and confusion not very commonly asked what you should remember are these two things corneal vascularization and uh, cataract and of course the photophobia right so this is a you know quick uh, recap of all the vitamin deficiencies we should be aware of so we should know that in beri beri we have two kind of presentation one is the heart involvement where the child goes into congestive cardiac failure or the neurological involvement in form of peripheral neuritis uh, riboflavin deficiency we have already discussed the mouth signs the eye signs the corneal vascularization and the cataract and photophobia and the skin seborrheic dermatitis typically involving the nasolabial folds very importantly what is asked in your exam is the niacin deficiency also known as the b3 deficiency where you get to see pellagra where you which is consist of 3 d's dermatitis and diarrhea and dementia and here on the skin in the exposed part of the skin which is exposed to sunlight we get to see a photosensitive rash which is seen in form of a necklace around the neck and is known as castle necklace neurological manifestation in would be in form of posterior lateral cord degeneration which is usually associated with chronic deficiency right coming to the other vitamin deficiency the pyridoxin deficiency would be in form of peripheral neuropathy and refractory seizures one vitamin deficiency you know this also question comes in your exam neonatal seizures caused by one vitamin deficiency which vitamin deficiency is responsible for one kind of neonatal seizures yes the answer is pyridoxin always remember that pyridoxin deficiencies can give rise to neonatal seizures also and in hematological manifestation would be microcytic anemia Cyanocobalamin usually presents with pernicious anemia that is your megaloblastic anemia and neurological manifestation would be subacute combined degeneration of nerve cord and peripheral neuropathy biotin deficiency usually seen when the eggs raw eggs are consumed always remember raw eggs because they contain avidin and avidin binds biotin and prevents its absorption leading to biotin deficiency so biotin deficiency any vitamin deficiency which is which occurs because of consumption of raw eggs always remember the answer is biotin and here what you get to see a dermatitis glossitis also and hypercholesterolemia and apart from that we get to see manifestations on the head and mouth in form of dry scalp right then folate deficiency usually you know uh, manifest as Uh, megaloblastic anemia and pantothenic acid uh, deficiency would manifest with burning feet syndrome and insomnia so these are few vitamin deficiency we should be aware of